FM 88 WPAR now presents the Good Fight broadcast with the evangelist Tony Van Hooser. Good evening. Welcome to the Good Fight program. This is Tony Van Hooser. The Apostle Paul wrote in the first chapter of the second epistle to Timothy, in verse 11 and 12, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I, saw, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And what is it that Paul is talking about in verse 12 that he had committed unto God? Paul is talking about his soul. His soul. Paul is saying, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is well with my soul. And that's what Christians uh, down through the ages have been saying for the past uh, 1,960 years. Men and women and, ch and children have been saying, because of the man on Calvary, it is well with my soul. Uh, they, they've been able to say that it may not be well with my heart. My heart may be in pieces, but it is well with my soul. Now, they've been able to say that it may not be well with my life. My life might be uh, in turmoil and confusion, but it is well with my soul. And they've been able to say that it may not be well with my body. My body might be in pain and it might be wrecked with disease. But one thing for sure, it is well with my soul. Uh, because of the man on Calvary. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is well with my soul. My question for you this evening is the title of my message. Is it well with your soul? Is it well with your soul? There are millions of people in this world tonight that cannot answer that. They cannot say that it is well with their soul. Are you one of them? Are you one of them? Uh, can you say with, beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is well with your soul? I can. No matter what happens in my life, no matter what happens t tomorrow, uh, next week, next month, next year, no matter what takes place, if, uh, if I get in a car wreck, die of uh, cancer, if I get a disease, no matter what happens, my soul will be all right. It is well with my soul. Uh, if a man or a woman is not able to say that, they're living their life from day to day. Like, uh, I tell you how they're living. They're living like they're playing Russian roulette with the devil. In the chamber, there's only one chamber in, in the gun that is empty. And the devil's holding the gun to your head. That's how you're living your life. You see, the devil wants to destroy you. The devil wants to kill you. The devil wants to do, he'll do anything he can to uh, end your life before you get saved. So your soul will be uh, lost forever. And that's what the devil wants to do to you. And that's how you're living your life. But you can fix it. You can fix it. You can say, like the Apostle Paul and uh, all all the men and women down through the ages I am persuaded that God is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day to be able to say that you need to know three things number one you need to know what is the soul most people don't even know what the soul is they don't even know that they have a soul number two you need to know what is the danger what's the danger uh, if a person doesn't know what the danger is, they, w they won't take precautions to avoid that danger. And number three, what are those precautions? First, I'd like to, uh, to look at what is the soul. When God created man, he created him in his own image. In Ch Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 
Verse 7 of chapter 2 tells how God did that. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril, nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when God created man, he created him in three with three parts, just like God has three parts. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. God created man with three parts. The body, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The spirit, God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the soul, and man became a living soul. And when Adam sinned in the garden, something happened. And God told Adam and Eve not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he said, For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. In the very day that Adam and Eve took of that fruit, they died spiritually. Their spirit died within them. When God created man, he made him a living soul. His soul lives on forever. But when Adam took of the fruit, his spirit died. And that's why Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, You must be born again. He said, You must be born of the spirit but until a man is born again until a man is born of the spirit he's walking around in a body that's headed for the graveyard with an eternal soul inside that body with a dead spirit inside that soul your soul is that thing inside you that loves and hates your soul listen your soul is that thing inside of you that used to get hurt whenever you got yelled at by your mama but your body is that thing that used to get hurt when daddy came home with the belt you see the difference your soul is the real you there's something inside you that does your thinking besides that hunk of meat between your ears there's something inside you that loves besides that um, muscle inside your chest when someone says that they've gotten their heart broke what do you do do you go uh, do you perform emergency open heart surgery on them? No, because that's not what they're talking about. They're not talking about that muscle uh, that pumps blood. They're talking about that, that thing inside them, their, the real them, their soul. The soul is that uh, thing that's inside of your body that is the real you. The body, uh, for the time being, is what you're living in. Your body is the clothes of your soul the, the 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 soul's clothes that you're wearing number two now let's look at the soul's danger what danger does your soul face what is the danger well that danger is shown to us we see that danger in genesis chapter 35 and verse 18 in genesis chapter 35 and verse 18 the bible says and it came to pass as it always does as her soul was in departing for she died this is talking about Rachel it says that she died because her soul departed from her body and when a soul departs from a body it goes to one of two places it either goes to heaven or it goes to hell the Lord Jesus Christ told the story of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16 in Luke chapter 16, verse 22, it tells of both their deaths. It says that Lazarus died and was carried by the angels in Abraham's bosom. Now, Abraham's bosom was the place where Old Testament saints went until the blood atonement was made for their sins by the death of the Lord on the cross. And the Bible speaks of that place after the resurrection of the Lord from the grave. In Ephesians chapter 4, and verse 8. In Ephesians chapter 4 and 8, the Bible says... Wherefore he saith, when he ascended upon high, he, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, led captivity captive. So when the Lord Jesus Christ went back to heaven, he took the souls of all those that had died from, from Adam to John the Baptist that were saved in the Old Testament way of being saved. But now, when a Christian dies, he goes directly to heaven. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8, Paul said, we are confident, confident, I say, 
and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. When the Old Testament saint died, he was carried into Abraham's bosom. When a New Testament Christian dies, he is absent from the body and in the Lord's presence. But in Luke chapter 16, verse 22, the Bible says that it came to pass, as it always does, that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Verse 23 says, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. In verse 27, the Bible says, The rich man said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Notice that the soul of the rich man had all its faculties, had all his, had all his faculties. In verse 23, he could see. In verses 23 and 24, he could feel. The Bible says that he was in torments. In verse 24, he begged for water because he was tormented in the flames of hell. In verse 24, he could speak. In verse 25, he could remember. In verse 28, he had compassion towards his five brothers. He didn't want them to come to hell. This man's soul could see, it could hear, it could speak, it could feel and remember and even love. But it was on fire in hell. And it's not like the body. The soul is not like the body. The body can burn up, but the soul can't. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9, the Bible talks about some souls in heaven. In verse 9, the Bible says, and when, he, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? Holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and, uh, and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Here we see that uh, we see the souls of the martyred saints up in heaven. And although their blood had been shed and although although their bodies had been slain they could speak they could rest and they could even wear clothing so the physical death uh, the physical death when your brain and your head quits functioning and when your heart and your chest quits beating and your lungs <clears throat> quit breathing isn't the end of you so don't you ever think that it is the physical death isn't uh, isn't the one that you really have to be worried about. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, the Lord said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. The death of the soul comes at the end of the white throne judgment. And that's when your soul, if you're lost, that's when your soul will come up out of hell and your body will come up out of the grave. And you'll think, you'll think that you've finally been released from that awful prison. But it'll only be for a short time. Just long enough for you to stand before God. And you'll be given a chance to try and justify yourself. And you'll be able to tell God of all the wonderful good uh, things that you did on this earth. And you'll be given the opportunity to explain to God why you didn't receive His Son as your savior but you know what he's going to say he's going to say depart from me i never knew you and no matter how much you beg you're going to depart from god you know why because you've had your chance you've had your chance and the final place for the soul of a man that never gets saved is the lake of fire revelation chapter 20 
verses 11 through 15. Revelation 20, 11 through 15 said, And I saw a great white throne, <clears throat> and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20, The soul that sinneth it shall die. And since your soul is eternal, and since something eternal cannot be destroyed completely, then uh, if you never get saved, your soul will, will suffer eternal punishment at the second death in the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 11, uh, verse 11 speaks of your soul in eternity. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. The final place for the soul of a man or a woman that rejects the Lord Jesus Christ is the lake of fire, and their soul will be tormented forever and ever. Uh, that's the danger your soul faces. That is, that it stands a chance on going to a place of eternal punishment. And there's only two things that will keep that from happening. There's only two things that can keep your soul from going there. Number one, never die. Number two, get saved. If you can stay alive forever, and you'll never have to worry about it. But the truth is, you can't. So if I were you, I would choose number two. I'd get saved. That brings me to my third point. The help for the soul. The precautions that you can take. What are those precautions? Well... Your soul can be saved by faith. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38, the Bible says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. 39 verse 39 says, But we are not of them uh, who draw back in the perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Believe what? What can you believe that will save your soul? Paul said, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. What is it that Paul believed? Paul believed that the death of Jesus Christ on the cross was the sacrificial payment for Paul's sins. That he not only died but rose again from the grave. And if he, Paul, trusted Jesus to save him, he would. And in trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, Paul committed his soul's welfare into the hands of the Son of God, who will never let you down if you do the same. Just trust him. Trust him with your soul. Tell him you don't want to go to that, that awful place. Tell him that you know you're a sinner. Tell him that you deserve to go to hell and to burn for eternity in the lake of fire. But you're going to trust Him. You're going to trust what He did on Calvary as the payment for your sins. And that you're going to commit your soul's eternal welfare into His hands. And He won't let you down. If you do that, I promise you, He will not let you down. Uh, if you do that, no matter what takes place in your life, no matter what happens to your body, You'll be able to say, uh, along with the millions of others down through the ages, it is well with my soul. You'll be able to say, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ hath regarded 
my helpless estate, and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. I trust you do that tonight. Do it before it's everlasting too late. Get saved, and you can say that it is well with your soul. Until next week, Lord willing, this is Tony Van Hooser. God bless you and good day. been listening to the Good Fight broadcast with the evangelist Tony Van Hooser. The mailing address, Post Office Box 1311, Newton, North Carolina, 28658. Listen every Saturday evening from 7.30 until 7.50 for the Good Fight broadcast here on FM 88 WPAR. Mention our call letters when you write. We'll